What is up guys? It is John and I am back giving another tier list our favorite thing. So Today we'll be doing the first basements. This should be coming out just after the catcher tier list where you saw Joe Maurer was S tier um, This tier list is a little longer, but I'm gonna try to get through it. So um, As always if you want to go to the end I do a quick summary um, of where the tier list is and who I think is viable and if you have any comments, questions, or you want to um, say your opinion about a card and saying I put them too low or too high, I would love to hear your um, opinion in the comment section below. Well, uh, let's just get right into it. And Eric Osmar, I'm going to say is, I'm going to say D tier cut or D tier first baseman right now. Hosmer doesn't, he's the Royal Collection reward. He just lacks the contact and power that you expect out of a first base or the power that you expect out of a first baseman. He has sub 70 power against righties, sub 55 against lefties, good fielding, which does not matter at first base. So first base fielding means nothing to me. Frank Thomas can do it. Anybody can do it. I want to see that bat. This position is all about generating offense. Eric Hosmer does not do that. So Eric Hosmer, D tier. Next up, Justin Morneau. I'm going to put in C tier, left-handed hitter. Same problem. He has above 80 power against righties, which is who you're going to face the majority of the time. But he is slow. He doesn't have high contact. So if the higher hits per nine, I know there's not many players, but most of them are sitting around 80 to 100. PCI is going to be small. It's going to be harder to square it up. And there's just better options out there in my opinion. But Justin Morneau is definitely better than um, Eric Cosmer. But he's nothing crazy in my opinion. Next up, Big Poppy. Um, Big Poppy, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna also put Big Poppy in C tier right now. Big Poppy might move to B tier, but for now I'm gonna put him in C tier. Big Poppy kills righties and he's very service well since lefties. Again, don't care about fielding. 50's a little low with common, but I'm sure it's more than, it is definitely more than serviceable. 31 speed, which is okay for a first baseman. He's a little slow, but overall, I'm going to say he's a C-tier um, first baseman right now. Let's see. Next up, Jim Tomey. And actually, before I be or keep going, uh, first baseman's very subjective. Um, there's a lot of very similar cards right now, so it's pretty much based on swing. So I haven't used Morneau enough to say his swing is good, but David Ortiz's swing is good and gets a lot of lift. Um, which is why he can easily be moved up. And being said, I'm going to put Jim Tome, or Tomey in B tier. So Jim Tomey has above 80 contact, pretty much for both, both, versus both hands. All he needs is parallel one to get to 80. Uh, power is desirable. He's above 80. So if you square it up and get a perfect perfect and you're not in an absolute awful ballpark, he's going to hit a home run. And with that said, I'm going to put him in B tier as our first player in B tier. Next up, we have new legend Kevin Eucalypts. U Eucalypts, so you saw me switch there, so I'll just stay on here. Kevin Eucalypts has reverse splits, which is good for now because um, all the right-handed pitching you're going to face, he actually has very good fielding and 40 speed. Um, Eucalypts, Eucalypts is an interesting card that I don't actually know much about him. Um, I haven't really, I haven't used him yet. Um, so I actually have no true opinion, and so this is going to be my caveat saying, I don't know where to rank Euclid. I would say between B and C tier, I can say confidently. Um, but I'm going to play a conservative and just put him in the middle of C tier. Um, just because I can't really give a great opinion. I'm going to say he's worse than Ortiz, better than Morneau, but at the end of the day, you could easily argue this. Next up, Torque. I'm going to say A tier. There's not much I have to say about Torkelson. He's a budget um, first baseman that can pretty much do it all. Um, let me pull him up real quick. So for 15K, they're getting above 80 for everything. Oh, he's actually a primary first baseman. I thought he was primary third baseman. We were getting very good speed. For our first baseman at this time of the year, at 55, above 80 for all hitting categories. Um, he's easily A tier. Good swing. Next up, Vlad. I'm going to put in A tier. Um, 
because again, S tier, I'm gonna only going to have two players. And I already have two in my mind, one right-handed, one left-handed. Um, but Vlad, what, I mean, what can I say? He's killing it for the Blue Jays. He was almost the Triple Crown winner uh, last year. Vlad is the man, to say the least. He just got boosted to 95 a few days ago, and then with Inside Edge, like today, he's 88-94 against righties and 77-95 against lefties with good with serviceable fielding, serviceable feet, um, speed for the time, with a great swing. With that said, he is the top of A tier. Next up, easiest one of the list, Frank Thomas. He's S tier. Uh, if you don't know who Frank Thomas is, you obviously did not play MOB 19 when everybody had him. Uh, or it was 20, maybe. Whenever you had the progression that you had the packs going into diamond and that kind of stuff, but not the prestige. Um, pretty sure it was 19, but Frank, he's a tall 6'5 right-handed hitter who crushes everything. He's above 100, and he's the easiest S tier I can give. Matt Olson, I'm going to say is... I'm going to hold off on Matt Olson, actually. I'm not sure where Matt Olson's going to be, but I'm going to have to see where it is. Next up, Ryan Howard, B tier. Ryan Howard is a buttery smooth swing, and he can hit it like the rest of them. He's practically just like Ortiz, but I may be biased just because I'm a Yankees fan, but Ryan Howard's swing is just buttery smooth. Like 86, 110 against righties killed it. If anything, he can be a bench bat. But again, Ryan Howard, David Ortiz, practically the same player. You can interchange these. You can interchange these two. Um, but he is just that guy. Uh, Josh Bell, I'm going to put top of B tier. Switch hitting first baseman with pretty much 80 plus in all categories. So 80 plus power and contact. Um, fielding's good. Speed's serviceable at 42. He's not going to wow you on anything, but he's a switch hitting first baseman who pretty much does his most. Next up, Joey Votto. I'm going to put in C tier. Uh, Votto kills righties, which I value immensely. Actually, I'm going to put him in front of uh, more now. Just for swing-wise, again, don't know more no swing that well. But Joey Votto has a great swing. Votto's a little slower, which is why I'm going to re rank him in C tier. He absolutely mashes righties, but against lefties, he's not really what you're looking for at the first base level. Um, so that's why he gets his C tier. Next up, Prince Fielder. I'm going to put Prince second um, in A tier. He is the NL Central Collection Reward. Um, he is my current starting first baseman, so bringing up his stats, he has pretty much 90, 100 power against righties and about 80, 85 against, um, or contact against both. Uh, great swing, even though his bicep goes through his chest, and serviceable speed. Uh, but overall, Prince is just marginally better than them to earn that A tier spot. Next up, Todd Helton, I'm going to put in B tier. Todd Helton. At this time of the year, if we had his juice version, obviously he would be way higher. But um, this Todd Helton stat-wise, I'm sure people are going to say how he's like the third best um, first baseman in the game. Um, but again, power reigns supreme, and I want to see that 80 number. Like his fielding is great, which is boosting his overall, and his speed is definitely good. Um, but I, out of the first baseman, I'm just looking for 80 power. The contact's great and can be very serviceable, and his swing is good enough to hit home runs. But at this point, I want to see somebody like a Josh Bell who can consistently hit the ball out, or Jim Tomey, or even Ryan Howard, uh, to say the least. I would say I'm only putting him here just because of the fielding and marginal speed increase, but overall, you could argue, easily argue any of these BC tiers to be rearranged. I think I'm pretty confident with the A, S, and D. Um, so next up is CJ Krohn. And I'm going to put him in C tier. Um, again, it's a right-handed hitting meta. Uh, so I put CJ Crone right here in C tier. It's a right-hand hitting meta. Um, he only has 68 contact against righties, uh, 92 power. Power is great. Speed's fine. Feeling's fine. It's just I wish that right-handed, um, I wish that right-handed hitting numbers was just a little better. All right, so the next one up, I'm going to warn you in advance. I am a Freddie Freeman stan. Um, 
Freddie Freeman's swing is one of the best in the game, in my opinion. So I am going to put him in A tier. So we have two lefties, two righties, and A tier. Um, Freddie Freeman uh, is always playing up with inside edge. He is currently 107 or one, one yeah, 107 and 94 against righties, which again, right handed meta. He has very serviceable speed at 50. Actually, take away two context points. I have a parallel two, but. Freddie Freeman swing, just like, look at this. I know this is mostly all-star event, but it's still facing players still. He's, it's still online, even if it's all-star. But 456 average through 70 games, uh, 16 home runs. His OPS is 1.7. I'm just very biased on Freddie Freeman. And that's why I'm putting him in A tier. You can argue with me on this one. I'm not backing down. Freddie Freeman is just a stud. Um, he kills lefty on lefty. So yeah, I'm going to put Freddie Freeman in A tier. And uh, I'm not going to take anything in the comments otherwise. <laughs> uh, just joking with that. But anyways, uh, Max Muncy, I'm going to put in... I'm going to put him... I'm going to make the switch. I'm going to put David Ortiz in bottom of B tier with Ryan Howard. And I'm going to put Muncy in C tier. So Muncy... He has the power to show. He gets inside edge, but a context might be just a smidge too low for this time of the year, even at this time of the year. It's going to be serviceable at this time of the year, but it's not something that I would want. I would rather have a Josh Bell. Um, even I would have, obviously would have to I would have Freddie, but um, you can find cheaper stuff like Josh Bell with better contact, or even um, Joey Votto. Actually, CJ Cron would be the best comparison. Actually, I'm going to go like that. Because um, they have similar power or contact to his righty. It's just Muncy's a lefty. Um, Muncy's uh, fielding pretty much brings him up to his overall. But overall, he's he, if you square it up, he's going to hit it out. But with the lack of contact, I'm going to put him in C tier. Um, next up is uh, Tristan K. K Sass. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't used this card. Um, but I'm going to put him in the middle of B tier. Actually, I'll put him at the bottom of B tier. Um, kills righties, and that's the meta. Good speed. A um, little less contact against lefties. He just very similar sets to Freddie Freeman. He just does not get inside edge. Um, I don't really have much to say about him, but I'm going to put him in B tier. Uh, let me know your opinion of him below, and I would love to hear it. Adam Dunn uh, is... A tier. Actually, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to have two right hand S tiers for now. Ah, we'll see how I feel. Anyways, Adam Dunn. A tier. I'm actually going to put him as better than Prince, Freddy, and them. If you don't know Adam Dunn, Poppy Chulo. Poppy Chulo hits bombs, and if you square it up with him, it is going out of the ballpark, no questions asked. Like, look at these stats. Um, 80, 117, 74, 99. Good fielding, speed. You can play him. He's primary left fielder. But this man is a stud. Like, if you square it up, you're going to hit it out. It's just that simple. Adam Dunn is that guy right now. Um, actually, I'm going to put him in tier. He has everything I want in a first baseman. Left-handed hitting. Um, good speed for a first baseman and a good swing. So I'm going to put him as an S tier. Pete Alonzo. All right, here we go. So Jared Walsh, I'm going to just say, is better than Hosmer. So I'm going to put Hosmer in F. I'm going to hot take Polar Bear Pete, Pistol Pete. I'm putting in D tier. Pete is a great hitter. In the fact that if you square it up, it's going to leave the ballpark. But his contact is where we have problems. He's a right-handed hitter with 65 contact and 48 contact against lefties. So if you do get that hand advantage, you're not really taking advantage of it other than the power. You still have to square it up. Um, fielding, again, don't care about. He's a little... He's serviceable speed. 34 speed is passable. But um, other than that, I wouldn't say... Um, Pete is anything crazy. He's a live series card. Gold, I'm going to say D tier. Definitely serviceable, though. Next up, Pujols, A tier. What can I say? Pujols has a great swing this year for some reason. They switched it up. He's literally 120, 100 against righties. Um, 
you can't really get much better. Probably the best speed on the list I've seen so far. And he's just the guy. So yeah, I'm going to say he's S tier. Next up is Cody B, Cody Bellinger. I'm going to put him at the second of B tier. So Bellinger is like JT Real Muto in that he gets the um, speed portion. Not many um, first basemen have 76 speed, and he has it. He also kills righties. Um, obviously, I would rather have his fielding in the outfield, but if you're having that first base, that's fine too. He's going to give you a good swing and hit the ball out. And again, I'm biased. 86 plate appearances all on that event, and he has a 422 batting average with a 1.5 OPS. So he performs, um, but he's only going to hit righties. Let's see what I'm going against left. I'm actually batting almost 500 against lefties, so... If you think that he has a problem against left-handing, I mean, granted, I do hit lefty on lefty better than most, but he definitely is serviceable against left-handed hitting. Left-handed pitching. And then last up is Matt Olson, which I think I'm going to have to put him with Max Muncy in C tier. So Matt Olson is a tough one. Newest Brave. Um, he has good contact and power. Low, decent speed. Actually, no, I'm going to keep him there. So, overall, Matt Olson, very serviceable first baseman. And I'll hit the um, summary stuff with him and why I couldn't really rate him. But uh, he's just very similar to everybody else. A lot of first basemen, like, this is a very redundant position at times because you're looking for a left-handed power hitter. And it's all determined on speed. So, I might actually put him above CJ Crone. Might put him above CJ Crone just because... Uh, he's left-handed. Um, and I think I feel pretty confident with this tier list right now. So obviously Frank Thomas is the best um, hitter in the game right now. Obviously S tier. Probably Chulo, Adam Dunn. Left-handed hitting, good speed, kills kills both hands. Pujols, same thing. Vlad crushes, um, but just marginally worse than these three in my opinion. Torque is um, like Vlad, kills... He, both all all six of the or all seven of these I would say are if you have them you're in a good spot and again I am very 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 biased against Matt or towards Matt Olson. Um, B tier wise, Josh Bell switch hitter, um, Cody Bellinger I hit well against lefties and he has a very good swing and he kills righties and he has the speed. Elton plays good defense, good contact. Tommy if you square it up it's gone. Squared up is gone. Squared up is gone. Don't know much, much about Tristan Kessis, but his stats look like a B-tier player. Matt Olson has a hole in his game. Crone is a right-handed that can't hit righties that well. Once he has bad contact. Euclid, I don't know too much about, but he has reverse splits, which is good. Vado only can hit righties, and Morneau is the question mark that could move, but he's very similar to all of these. Gold Live Series. Doesn't have contact, only hits righties, and bad. So don't use Hosmer. If you have to use Alonzo or Walsh, platoon them. But again, just try to save up for a face of the franchise or get them in the pack. Um, for this one, I would say being above, you're good. If you have anybody in the C tier. Unless you love CJ Crone, Joey Votto, or even Justin Morneau. Um, I would look to upgrade because you could get a Josh Bell, which is way better than Matt Olson or Max Muncy. Um, but overall, first base is all about how you feel with a player. If you hit well, then use them, obviously. Um, I know this one was a little longer, but I felt like I had to explain players a little more. And I would rather have these in depth than general, because I see a lot of general tier lists, and I would rather give more insight of like why I'm doing it, even if it's tougher. Um, but again, it's all personal preference, and if you disagree with one of my opinions, that's perfectly fine. I would love to hear your opinion in the comment section below. Um, and of course, thank you for watching and leave a like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Um, the next tier list video should be coming either Tuesday or Wednesday. I haven't really decided yet when I'm going to record them. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching and have a good day.